Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with crispy garlic crumb steak. That's right, we're gonna show you how to do a crispy breaded steak without breading a steak, which don't worry, only sounds impossible. And while we're doing that relatively new discovery, we're gonna review a very important old trick, which is how to make a cheaper, tougher cut of steak come out the same as a cut that's much more tender and expensive. And either of those things would make this worth watching, but here you're getting both. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by prepping our breadcrumbs. And originally I was just gonna use some plain panko breadcrumbs for this, but then I thought, why not soak these in olive oil first, which might help things get crispier faster. And then I thought, since we're gonna use oil, why not toss in a couple cloves of crushed garlic and then put this on medium heat until that garlic sizzles. And that way after that garlic sizzles for about 30 seconds, we could strain this oil into our crumbs creating, oh yeah, garlic crumbs. So that's exactly what I did. And all we need to do is give that a stir and we'll let it cool and reserve it until needed. And that's it, once our garlic crumbs are set, we can move on to the meat. And what I have here is a well-trimmed eight ounce top sirloin steak that we'll place down on a piece of plastic wrap and then we will fold the other half over and then using a meat pounder or some other heavy object like a rolling pin, we will pound this steak out to about a quarter inch thick and while top sirloin is a very affordable steak that is actually very flavorful, it is very lean and can be kind of tough. But if we pound it out like this, it actually becomes nice and tender. So like I said, we'll pound that out to about a quarter inch thickness, at which point we'll want to season that on both sides with salt and freshly ground black pepper, which I mixed ahead of time to save a step. And by the way, if you were going to sneak in some secret herbs and spices, this would be the point. So feel free to season this up any which way you want. And then once that's set, we'll go ahead and take our now cooled crumbs and we'll go ahead and spoon over just enough to cover the surface and we will spread that all the way out to the edges or at least as close as we can get. And then what we'll do is fold our plastic back over and we'll give this another quick pounding to drive those oily garlicky breadcrumbs into the surface of the meat. And once that's been accomplished, we'll flip it over and do the exact same thing to the other side. And the reason we chose panko for this is because they feature a much larger, much sharper, more jagged crumb, which I think is gonna to attach to our beef a lot better than regular breadcrumbs, that are much smaller and have more of a rounder shape. But having said that, theoretically, any dry breadcrumb will work. So you decide. I mean, you are after all the big cheese of how to bread these. Oh, and speaking of big cheeses, we could, if we want, also grate some Parmesan on this before we pound it, but I didn't and just went straight crumb and it was really, really good. But anyway, just something to consider for future experiments. And that's it, once our steak has been pounded, seasoned, and garlic crumbed, we can pop that in the fridge until we're ready to use it. Or we can head to the stove, where we have a pan set over medium high heat, in which we have about a tablespoon and a half of olive oil. And once that oil's hot, we'll go ahead and place in our steak. And once our steak is sizzling nicely like this, we'll reduce our heat down to medium, and we'll cook this for about two minutes per side, which should get us something between a medium rare and a medium. And as you can see, even though we skipped the traditional breading station with the seasoned flour and the egg dip and the breadcrumbs and the multiple dishes and all the mess, we've achieved something appearance-wise at least, virtually identical. And as we'll get to later, taste and texture-wise almost identical as well. But anyway, I gave that second side about two minutes. And at this point it was feeling just about right, meaning it didn't feel mushy and it was just springing back to the touch. So I went ahead and turned off the heat and served it up on top of a beautiful salad, like some kind of giant flat meat crouton. Note to self, five years from now do this exact same video, except call it giant flat meat croutons. And while there are many pan sauces and condiments you can serve with this, I think just a nice freshly cut wedge of lemon is all you need. So I went ahead and squeezed that over and dug in. And that, my friends, truly was incredible on many, many levels. Okay, first of all, it really does feel and taste like a traditionally breaded steak. Okay, it really is virtually identical. And of course, it's not gonna taste exactly the same if you don't use an egg, but I really don't think it's something the average person's gonna notice, especially since they're gonna be noticing all that amazing garlic flavor, which by the way, was fairly subtle. So if you really, really love garlic, you could saute another crushed garlic in the pan with another tablespoon of olive oil or butter, maybe toss in a pinch of parsley, and you could spoon that over the top. 
But it really was amazing just like this. And thanks to the pounding and short cooking time, our formerly tough, uninteresting top sirloin tastes like something much more expensive. And as I mentioned, a top sirloin steak does not have a lot of fat in it. But by driving those oily breadcrumbs into the meat, we've actually, in a way, increased the fat content in the steak. And because our breadcrumbs were soaked in oil, they got crispy and browned up beautifully without having to use a ton of oil in the pan. Okay, traditionally a breaded steak is shallow fried, whereas here we can get away with just a tablespoon or two. So we will add that to the official list of advantages. And if you're thinking that looks great, but I don't eat steak, well, I got great news for you. This should work just about the same on a chicken breast or a piece of pork loin or pretty much any other kind of protein you can pound into a similar size shape. So do not think of this as a beef steak recipe. In fact, don't even think of it as any kind of a recipe. Just think of it as a fast, easy, delicious thing to do to food. Oh, and for any tomato nerds in the audience, yes, those are Midnight Romans, which I got from my neighbor Jocelyn, and we did eat a few, but we're gonna save the rest for seeds so we can plant our own, because they're just so cool looking and very delicious. But anyway, that's it, where we're calling garlic crumb steak. If you're in the mood for a crispy breaded pan fried steak, but you don't feel like messing around with a traditional breading station, and you don't want to deal with a big pan of splattering oil, and maybe you also want to make a cheap tough steak taste like an expensive tender steak. Anyway, whether it's some of those reasons or all those reasons, I just absolutely love how this comes out, and I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.